Hi there, and welcome to another DEC online service. At this point, it looks like we're going to be doing church online for some weeks to come. If you have any suggestions as to what you'd like to see or hear about, why don't you drop me a line at dougie at dec.ie. After last week's messing about, I've decided to abandon working with animals. I don't know if you saw the blooper during the credits at the end of the video. Uh, if you missed it, you can rewatch the end of last week's service and catch it. Hopefully it'll make you smile. During today's service, uh, we will be talking to our younger viewers, Ben will be. Uh, Ross will be leading us in prayer and we're going to be considering some more words from Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. Um, before we go to some worship music led by our DEC musicians, let's pray. Loving Father, as we come together and listen to your word, we ask that you will fill us with your spirit, that we will be enlivened and encouraged. Amen. So it's over to the band.
Have you ever gotten a present that you were disappointed with? You were expecting one thing and you got another? I remember when I was around four, it was Christmas day, and I woke up really excited to go down to look at presents. And so I went into the living room with my parents, and there was this big present in the back of the room with my name on it. And so this present was wrapped up, and at the front it had this tall part um, with these pointy things at the sides, um, and then in the middle it was lower, sort of like something you could probably sit on, and then at the back it curved down. And so I thought that my parents had got me a pet reindeer. But as I opened the present, my excitement quickly turned to disappointment. As I opened the front and the two pointy bits, which should have been antlers, turned into handlebars, the flat bit, which should have been the reindeer's body, turned into a saddle, the curved bit turned into not a reindeer's tail, but the back of a wheel and the legs, where the legs should have been, there were wheels. My parents hadn't gotten me my own pet Rudolph, they had gotten me a bike. In the Bible, Jesus touches on uh, the topic of surprise presents. And so we can read it in Matthew 7, 7 to 12. And it reads this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks on the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then thought you're evil, if you then, though you are evil, know how to, to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to, who, to those who ask? So imagine if on Christmas Day you wake up really excited because you're hoping to get the new Xbox or a new cool book or a fun new board game. But instead, when you open your present, you get a box of rocks or even worse, a deadly snake. Your parents would be a bit mean or cruel to give you a snake. And if they did give you a deadly snake, they probably aren't very good parents. And that's what Jesus is saying in this passage. If you ask your parents for food or something else you need, they're going to give it to you because that's what good parents do. And so we shouldn't expect anything less from our parent, our, our father in heaven because he's going to give us whatever we need if we ask for it. If we go looking for him, he's not going to try to hide from us. If we knock at the door, he's not going to not answer it. Um, and if we ask for something we need, he's going to give it to us because that's what a good parent does. And so this doesn't mean that you can ask him for an Xbox or a reindeer, and he's just going to give it to us. But it means that if we need something, um, he's going to provide for us, because that's what a good parent does. Last week, we considered Jesus' words about not judging people. At the end of the passage, we also read about how we, we shouldn't try to force sacred things or our beliefs on those who are not ready to hear them. If you think about it, it makes such a mockery of historical Christian events and practices which try to coerce people to accept Christianity by force, especially during the Middle Ages, and as part of the expansion of empires over many centuries. It also asks us questions about our own families and friends and how we interact with non-Christians. My utter conviction is that all that in all things the way of the kingdom is to love first. As I think back over the past weeks as we've considered Jesus' words, I really get the feeling that Jesus is heading towards a crescendo of thought about how we should live, especially concerning our interactions with other people. In the passage we're going to consider today, I believe that he brings us to that peak of inspirational kingdom knowledge. As with much of the sermon, that Jesus gave on that uh, mountainside some 2,000 years ago. Today's passage is also somewhat controversial, and we need to take time to understand what he's saying. On first appearance, it may seem that Jesus says that we can get whatever we want if we simply ask for it. However, most of us know that that's simply not true. I'm sure all of us have asked God for things uh, or outcomes that we have not received despite what Jesus appears to say here. What about seeking and finding? Maybe like me, 
you've looked for things and not found them. Certainly if you play golf, you know the frustration of trying to find your golf ball when it's gone astray. Or for me, for more often trying to find Graham Cross's green golf balls, which have the word crossy printed on them. I tell you this so that if you find one, you'll know where to send it. Indeed, I have a number of times repeated that verse to myself, looking in the long grass, seek and you will find. Sometimes I do, and more often I don't. So we look for some context to what Jesus is saying in the passage we're about to read. And after we listen to his words, here they are as recorded in Matthew 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the laws and the prophets. Ask, seek and knock. Each of the words in the original Greek are present imperative verbs. Don't worry, this isn't a Greek grammar lesson. If it was, I'd have somebody else give it. Simply, Jesus is not saying do these things once. There are actions that are to be repeated and repeated again. Ask and ask again. Knock and knock again. Seek and seek again. And go on asking, go on knocking and go on seeking. What though does Jesus mean when he says, ask, seek and knock? Well, in Luke's gospel, this saying of Jesus is immediately preceded by a story that Jesus told in order to help explain what he was saying. And here's the story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep on knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. I imagine that story brought a smile to the face of Jesus' disciples when he told it. Uh, you can imagine some guy in bed, toasty warm, with his friend banging on the door, threatening to wake the kids and the whole house and maybe his neighbours. I can imagine it would probably be the man's wife who would boot him out of the bed. Will you go on, Fred, and, and give that fellow what he wants before he wakes the whole street? You can imagine the scene. In our modern society, we perhaps don't get the sense of urgency that the rules of hospitality dictated in first century Israel. David Gooding, the uh, professor, suggests that if we think more of a story uh, about persuading a doctor to come, if we thought somebody was having a heart attack, uh, then we get the sense of urgency the man would have felt. I don't think that uh, through this story, Jesus is saying that God only uh, responds because he wants to shut us up, because we're annoying him. In fact, uh, the opposite is true, because Jesus says that we're to go on, keep on, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on praying. Persistence is key. I think that that's what Jesus is saying here, is that God invites us to join with him in the ways of the kingdom, and to do so through persistent prayer. God seeks good for everyone. Remember what Jesus uh, said about himself. I've come to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the uh, prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. This is the good news of God for everyone. This is the message of the kingdom. 
But how do the poor receive good news if they are not ready to hear it? Surely this is what Jesus is calling us to pray about and for. It follows on naturally from the section directly before that we read last week. Here's our context. Don't judge people. Don't fire the gospel at them like some sort of weapon of mass destruction. Instead, pray for them. Keep on praying for them. Ask God that their eyes would be opened. Seek for ways to bless and to love them and then be able to share with them. In Luke's uh, gospel, it's clear that the gift the Father is ready to give and the one that we should be praying for all the time is for God himself, the Holy Spirit. He is the one who gives us the gifts that allow us to bring the kingdom to the world. Once again, Jesus goes deep into our psyche and he touches our uh, motivations. He touches on our will and ultimately, whether we are given over to the kingdom of God or the kingdom of self, whether we're driven by our own desires and selfishness or driven by a desire to serve him. Jesus makes it clear that when we approach the Father in prayer and ask that he is more than willing to give to us spiritual gifts, not for our own benefit primarily, but because they will help us to be both Uh, pursuers and harbingers of the kingdom. So Jesus is not talking about asking uh, for the lotto numbers or uh, seeking lost golf balls or knocking on the door of success or fame. However, that's not to say that God is not interested in us or our needs. In the prayer that we now call the Lord's Prayer, Jesus uh, tells us, to ask the Father also for the physical things we need, like food, but to not be taken up with the material. Sometimes we might have a wrong view of God as someone sitting up there somewhere reluctantly handing out a few gifts here and there, but essentially having a tight fist. The opposite is true. God loves to give with an open hand and he is generous to all his children. Jesus explains that even those fathers who are uh, evil people are generally kind to their own children. Most fathers, even if they are bad in other ways, will try to be decent to their own kids. So Jesus says, well, if that's true, then how much more will your Father in heaven give you good gifts to those who ask him? How much more will he give? Lots more. That's the answer. Where is all this leading to then? This uh, aligning of our will with God's will, this denial of our selfish desires in favour of God's desires. And here's the crescendo Uh, We're talking about praying, asking, seeking, and knocking. And then Jesus says, so, so what? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Jesus had been redefining the law back to its original intent. Don't murder. In fact, don't get angry and spiteful. Don't lust. It's not a victimless crime. It leads to other actions. Don't judge people because of your own self-righteousness. Love like you would like to be loved. In fact, this is the condensed version of what Jesus has been saying to us up to now. This is the narrow peak at the top of the mountain we have climbed to date. Love and do to others as you would have them do to you. Maybe all of this sounds too difficult. It's certainly not easy to suppress thinking about ourselves for the benefit of others. But can I suggest to you 
that it's not only the right thing to do, but it also makes us healthier. The more we love and give of ourselves to others, the greater the reward. Not that we do it for that reason, but God's ways are right and good. Finally, as we head into these weeks where life is difficult for many people, can I ask you to put this passage into practice in two ways? Firstly, Let's pray for each other in DEC. And when someone comes to mind, maybe you would pray for them and also pick up the phone and give them a call or send them a text. This morning, I I wasn't able to attend a prayer meeting um, of church leaders. And afterwards, one of them called me and he just said, "I'm, I'm just giving you a call to see how you're doing. I really appreciated his call. And I knew, uh, I know that someone will appreciate your call if you call them. And the second thing you might do is to revive praying for those who you've given up on a bit. It's hard to sustain prayer for months or even years where we don't see very much in the way of results. But you know what? Don't give up. Keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. Our Father loves to give. Amen. So, unless you've been living under a rock for the last week or so, you'll be well aware that we have hit level five restrictions. And with that, there is all sorts of different emotions floating around the place that different people are feeling. And I know I'm feeling different things about it, to be fair, as well. And it's at times like this when I feel confused and angry and disappointed um, my mind goes to the prophet Habakkuk and I think about how he prayed he told God that he was confused he told God that he was upset and that he didn't really understand but I'm always taken by the fact that he waited and he still prayed and he still conversed with God he was persistent in prayer and communication with God much in the way of which Dougie was talking about earlier on so even though we may be feeling different things. Um, Let's bring our prayers to the Lord who hears us uh, and who understands us as well. I think at this point in time, what I'd really like to pray for are a few different things. I'd like to pray for small and medium businesses in our country um, who will be wrecked um, in so many different ways by what's going on. I'd like to pray for the vulnerable, especially those who are alone um, or who have different difficulties um, with their mental health at this time. Um, And I'd like to pray for teachers Uh, as well uh, for their bravery uh, and I'd like to pray that they get good rest over the next couple of weeks. Um, There are so many different people that we could pray for at this time. Um, We would be here all day um, but let's pray for these three different groups of people Um, and perhaps you can bring other people and other people groups that you're thinking about at this time as well. So let's pray. Dear God we, we understand that we are in a position that we are not comfortable with and that we struggle with. But yet we want to acknowledge that we still believe that you are good and we still believe that you have the ability to change things and that you can work big things uh, even in difficult times. And Lord, I just want to lift up people who own and work and run for small and medium businesses in our country where their livelihood has been taken away from them in so many different ways. Father, we pray for them. Lord, we ask that you would provide a way uh, in this time. We, we think of so many different businesses who will struggle at this time where they would have made so much of their income for the, for the year over the Christmas period uh, or, the, or the time coming up to Christmas. God, we pray for those people whose livelihoods will be somewhat very different. God, we pray uh, that they would um, in some way come to, to have faith in you that they would know that you are a God that provides, even in times that look so bleak for them. We pray for those who have lost their jobs overnight, and we pray for them uh, that they would be able to sustain their families, sustain their homes. God, we pray that you would bring a real sort of comfort to them at this time, when it is just so difficult. Thank you that you've heard us. And Father, I just pray for those who may be living on their own, 
Lord, I pray that they would have people in their lives that would be able to reach out to them and that they would still feel connected. God, I pray for each and every one of us that we would do that for people that we would know who would feel alone and vulnerable. I pray for those who may suffer with their mental health at this period of time too. God, I pray that you would just be a source of comfort and peace to them. Lord, I pray that they would reach out to you in a way that perhaps they never have before in times that are difficult and that you would bring peace to them and that you, you, would, you would make yourself aware to so many people in a new way. Lord, sometimes in, in the most difficult of times, you get our attention and we pray that people would turn their attention to you. And Father, we thank you so much for the, the hard work that school teachers have put in uh, across this, this country. Lord, they really have become frontline workers and we, we thank you for their bravery. And God, they're having a week off and it's probably been the most needed week off in their life. It's probably been the longest term ever for them. And Lord, we pray that you would bring them a special kind of rest over this period of time. We pray that you would rest their bodies physically, emotionally, spiritually as well. And we pray that they would um, be protected as they go back into school after midterm as well. Father, there's so many other different kinds of people and people groups that we know are in need at this time. And perhaps we might just want to take a moment at home to bring one or two of them before you right now. Father, we thank you that you have heard us. And God, even though that our heads and our thinking may be in so many different places and different spaces, I thank you that all through scripture we see people who came to you with difficult situations, who didn't understand and who were hurt and upset about those different situations going on. But we thank you that in each of those stories you heard their prayers. We thank you that in each of those stories you also worked things out for good. And so we pray for that for this situation too. We pray that you would work things out for good. Thank you that you've heard us. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. I'm excited to share that our church now has access to an extensive new video library called Right Now Media. It's like the Netflix of video Bible studies and has a huge library of faith-based videos that you can access whenever and wherever you want. Whether it's on your phone, iPad, computer, or at home on your smart TV. As a church staff, we're always looking for ways to help you develop and to strengthen your faith. We believe that Right Now Media will be a tool to serve you as you live out your faith at home, at work, and in your neighborhood. Right Now Media has videos for everyone, kids, youth, parents, married couples, students, single adults, working professionals, and all aimed at helping you grow. You should have already received an official invitation email to give you free access to Right Now Media. If you haven't received it yet, check your spam uh, fil filter. Once you find the email, simply click the link, sign up for an account, and you're all set to explore more than 20,000 videos. We pray that Right Now Media will be a blessing for you and your family. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. 
This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired.
Thanks for being with us this morning online, um, or indeed whatever part of the day you're watching this. Please do get in touch with us. We love hearing from you. Contact details uh, come up just after uh, we finish the service. And they're also on our website. So let's just pray together. Oh Lord, help us to grow persistent in prayer, to align our lives with your will, and to see your kingdom come more and more every day. Amen. See you next week.